<laughs> so, um, hi everyone, I'm Hannah, host of the Dean Duran podcast, and today I have a very special guest. It is pro wrestler and YouTuber Hector Canales. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Thank you for having me on your show, okay, Hannah. Thank you for being a guest on my podcast. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, were you a fan of wrestling growing up? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, the way I, I actually accidentally found wrestling, um, I was a big fan of Pee Wee Herman. And um, Pee Wee Herman was over, so I started channel surfing. Um, we didn't have remote controls back then. I got up, started turning the knob, turning the knob, and all of a sudden I see this policeman beating up on some cheapy wrestler, right? That's what we called them. We didn't we didn't call them jobbers back then. And afterwards, no names. We called them no names, no name wrestlers. Okay. So we called them basically. Um, so I. I'm changing the channel and I see this policeman and he's beating up on a cheapy wrestler, a jobber. What we call them were uh, no names, right? Oh, now they call them local, um, lo local performers, right? Local athletes or talent, uh, talent. Ta talent enhancement. So uh, my neighbor was dating a policeman. So he'd sometimes show up, you know, visit her. And his policeman gear. So I, every time he came to go visit his girlfriend, I was pretty scary. You know, I was only six years old. But then uh, uh, right after um, this policeman was beating up on this guy, they showed uh, Ravishing Rick Rude hitting on Jake the Snake's wife. And so the action with Big Boss Man beating up on this guy and then the drama of Ravishing Rick Rude Jake the Snake's wife, and then Jake the Snake, Jake the Snake coming out. That just that hooked me, and ever since I've been watching. So, um, who were you a fan of? As a little kid? Yeah, as a little kid. Uh, of course, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, yeah, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Um, and I honestly, I really, even though, you know, as a little kid, you always like the heroes, right? Yeah. But I was a fan of the Macho Man and Ravishing Rick Rude. Just because, you know, Rick Rude got the chicks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you have a favorite match to watch? Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior WrestleMania 6 because I didn't like the outcome. I watched that match over and over and over again. My dad blames me and my brother for messing up the VHS layer because we kept rewinding and rewinding and rewinding. My brother was a, a, he switched sides. He was a Hulk Hogan fan and then all of a sudden he was an Ultimate Warrior fan. I stayed true to my red and yellow colors and I was a Hulkamaniac. And when, when Earl Hebner counted, one, Two, three, Hogan kicked out. And we kept rewinding it, pushing pause. No, he kicked out. He kicked out. And my brother's jumping around. Yeah, hey, yeah, ultimate way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, he kicked out. He... And I'm, yeah. <laughs> Hulk Hogan still, you know, he kicked out. <laughs> okay, so um, how did you um, start wrestling? Uh... Okay, I was, I was about to get married. I saved up a lot of money uh, before I was even dating my wife. Uh, I was saving up money to buy myself a, a real nice Mustang. I wanted to get a 65 Mustang, and uh, so I saved up all this money. I started dating my wife. Uh, a year later, we got engaged, and then a year later, I got married. When we got engaged, I knew, well, this money that I was, gonna, I was saving up for the Mustang, I'm not going to use it for a Mustang. I don't need a Mustang anymore because the Mustang was for me to get chicks. And um, so <laughs> uh, 
I, I decided, well, I'm going to use this money to um, basically to fund my, my uh, the ceremony. Yeah, the ceremony. And I, I had saved enough money that I thought, well, I have enough and I have still a little bit left over. Not having the experience of, or knowledge or any real wisdom, I didn't say, oh, I'm going to keep it, you know, and maybe put it aside in a 401k or a savings account. Instead, I thought, what am I going to do with this money? Mm, what should I do with this money? And I wasn't a big spender. I, I've always worn just t-shirt and jeans, you know, regular guy, you know. Um, and my friend really wanted to train to be a wrestler. I, I always wanted it, but I knew that a guy my size wouldn't, you know, be able to make it. And plus, I have a back problem. I used to be a basketball player, and I uh, hurt my lower back. I have two ruptured discs in my lower back and one in my upper back. So I never really saw anything into it until he took me to UPW in El Segundo. And that's where John Cena trained, where The Miz trained. Uh, Brian Kendrick was there. Um, Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, um, Johnny Mundo now. Uh, who else? A few other guys were down there. And uh, Samoa Joe was there as well. And so we went, and I just kind of accompanied him with the thought of maybe, maybe, we'll see. Well, that moment I saw the ring was like that moment I saw my wife coming down the aisle when we were going to get married. Like, I'm in love. I am in love. And I remember they, they talked to us. I don't even know what they said to us. I was just, I couldn't get my eyes off that ring. I was like, whoa, look at that. So beautiful. Man, you know, I was, I was just like drooling over this, this ring like if it was a, a beautiful woman. And uh, um, they left us alone for a bit while some guys were bumping around in the ring. And uh, my friend was like, I wonder if they'll let us touch the ring. Well, I didn't wait. I just went up and I started tapping on the ring and I looked over at him. Oh, oh, oh. and after that, I signed up. It was, it was a lot of money. So the money that I, I had saved up went to that. It was like 2500 just to just to enroll and then 250 each month, something like that. Uh, originally, when I took the first few bumps, you know, I, I didn't have these, um, I guess plans of grandeur, you know, like when you start um, doing something like maybe as a little kid, you start painting and you start thinking, oh, I'm going to be the next Picasso. Mommy, mommy, look at these stick figures. Put it up on the fridge. Look at this. I didn't, I didn't have really those thoughts. What I did have was imagine me just raising my arms in the corner with a championship belt. Whoa. You know, that, that was, that was just all I really had in mind. I didn't, you know, later on I did like, wow, imagine if I could make it to WrestleMania. You know, then I started having, uh, as time went along, but being slammed around, um, being picked up, being tossed around, even the first times you start bouncing off the ropes, that stuff hurts. It was not fun. It... It was fun once your body starts numbing up oh, to it. You know, yeah. like when you first... Get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Like it was not fun, you know. Um, so the first few months, especially when we start doing like drills, like, okay, get in line, hip toss, hip toss, arm drag, and all this stuff, and take it, take it, big old hip toss. Look up, look up. No, look, tuck your chin. Bah! And then the ring was stiff too, so... Um, it was really hurting my back and at the time I didn't know how to manage my back pain so it was really really hurting a lot and I have to admit I was a bit of a coward I would hide because I knew that the first 30 minutes were those type of drills so I would hide in the bathroom and I would come out of the bathroom and say like I had diarrhea or something and I'd come up with some sort of excuse and but really it was just so scared I was it hurt and I had said in my mind that I was gonna ask my trainers the Ballard brothers they trained me 
I was going to ask them or ask anybody there, how do I become a referee? Because I was so scared of just taking another bump. And I loved the ring so much and I loved performing so much at that time. It was like really growing in me. Yeah, I just didn't want to get out of it. But at the same time, I couldn't take the pain anymore. And um, I really want to ask them, how do, how do I become a, a referee? But they're all men. You know, they're all grown men. They all had chest hair. And I'm, I've never grown chest hair. I've always felt like a little boy. You know, I mean, I barely started growing a mustache and a goatee. That's why I don't shave it. Just because this is, this is my uh, proof that I'm a man. You know, uh, and so everybody there seemed like they're men, you know, they, it was like telling your dad, dad, I don't want to mow the lawn or uh, we didn't have lawn, but and it was so, like telling your dad, no, papa, imagine he's going to spank me, you know, he's going to toss me across the room. So, um, I didn't know how to, I'm sorry, Shane, I'm sorry, Shannon. Um, how, how do I? become a referee like I couldn't I would be standing in line like wanting to tell them this hurts can I just be a ref you know and then eventually I started picking up on it and I don't I don't have a lot of charisma outside of the ring like I wish I had charisma maybe I'd be more popular in school with my parents I'd probably be more popular with my parents and family um, like more but um, yeah, I'm just kind of quiet. But once I'm in the ring, um, I'm a, I'm an introvert. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a, a extrovert. I'm really like, whoa! It's like I open up, you know, and I'm able to do my thing, you know. It's like uh, um, maybe that's how musicians feel. Well, I, I used to be a musician before I started wrestling, so that's kind of how I also. Um, I was able to transfer my music side, uh, my musical side in in me, into the ring, you know. And uh, um, so, yeah, <laughs> that the yeah, that's kind of how it started. Um, just I I couldn't stop after a while. Like I found ways to uh, um, deal with my back issues. Um, it still hurts every once in a while, but not as, not as bad. And now I just, I, I love telling a story. You know, I find it like, uh, folk singers when they sing about, um, you know, like old folk songs, they sing about sad stuff that's going on, or they sing about happy things in the ring. I'm able to sing about happy, uh, you know, perform happy things or sad things or angry things. You know, so I, I just I love the performance aspect of it. OK, so um, how long did you train before you had your first match as a pro wrestler? I trained. Well, here's the thing. Um, I spoke about me being getting married. Right. So I started training and then I took a few months off because I got married. And so there is that when I first started training, I would train four days a week. So I thought, that's a lot. You know, my wife and I, we just barely moved in together. Let's let's get to know each other and whatnot. So I took like uh, two to four months off. And then in training, I broke my ankle. And that took me out somewhere like uh, six months. But when I came back, I came back really good. So um, I'll, I'll say... It took me about a, a year before I wrestled in the ring and I wasn't really ready. After I broke my ankle, I felt a lot because I was able to understand what's going on in the ring. You know, before I broke my ankle, I thought, let's just go out there and let's just do moves. It's about doing moves. And then after I broke my ankle, um, I lay there in bed just watching wrestling. I bought myself a six hour VHS tape of the Million Dollar Man, and I learned off the Million Dollar Man how to tell a story in the ring without having to do crazy stuff. Because I knew that once I came back, um, I wasn't going to be able to do certain things for the first few months. 
like I used to do the Macho Man elbow off the top rope, I knew that's not going to happen, at least for the first few months, because, you know, the ankles still, mostly the ligaments. And I just got used to it. I got used to not going up to the third rope. Plus, it's scary going up there. Uh, scared of heights. Oh, yeah, yeah scared of heights. you're scared. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not, I mean, it's cool if someone's holding on to you and you could go, wee, look at me. <laughs> but once they let go, no, no, you know, you start getting the little shakes mm -hmm. and stuff like, nah, mejor no. It's a lot nicer down here. <laughs> So, um, who is your um, first opponent? My first opponent. His name was Peter Swissler. His uh, wrestling name was Peter Goodman. And this guy, he, uh, he led me by the hand through the whole match. Because, like I said, I wasn't good before I broke my ankle. I was... You know, it's like I did all these things in training, but all of a sudden, now they put you on the spot. Yeah. And you're right there. What do I do now? What do I do now? Punch me. <sighs> oh, man. And I, and, you know, I mean, I, I learned how to punch, how to give. They love my punches. Everybody said, oh, man, your punches look like you're really blasting a hole into the, the guy's face. Like, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a crowd there's lights. Punch me. Ah, oh, 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 like that, man. Like that. Oh, gosh. And so my, it just, everything just went away. And he literally just guided me through the whole match. Unfortunately, he died like, um, I'll say like seven years ago. But he was, uh, he was excellent. He, he was a top-notch performer. Okay, so um, who has been your favorite opponent? Who has been my favorite you can opponent? You've got more than one. You've got more than one. More than one? Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Recently, recently, and that's not putting, uh, I don't want to put anybody else down if they, if they hear this, but I had a match against Ray Rosas recently, like a few months ago. And there, there's a thing, okay, it, it, you know, this, there's still some kayfabe. There's still some kayfabe. But I am going to... Um, uh, shoot here a little. Because a lot of the kayfabe is gone. Everybody, you know, most of everybody knows what goes on. Okay, so... Wrestling match, you know, you agree upon uh, certain things. Sometimes you agree too much. And the uh, match is just too planned out, you know? Or too choreographed, you would say. I love matches where you kind of just say, you go to the promoter, who's going over? Okay. And then you go to the guy, hey, bro, what moves do you like to do? This, that, and the other. Cool. What moves do you like to do? I like to do this, didn't I? All right, cool. You want to start off uh, pretty fast, quick? Or you want to, you know, work a little. Uh, which, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, you want to do this, that, the other? Mm, we'll see. We'll feel it out there. Cool. All right. That is what, because then that gives you freedom to paint your picture. Imagine in school. Um, your teacher says, here's a piece of paper. Create what you want to create. Here's colors, here's pastel, everything. But here's a little line, here's a circle, here's a tree, here's the beach, here's a bucket. You need to color in all that stuff. So now you're restricted into, I need to yeah. paint in here. I can't go over the line. Now, what if the teacher said, go ahead Here's a clear picture. You can paint whatever you want. Here's the paint. You don't have to even, you, you could even go outside of the paper and paint on, on the table. Do whatever you want. Oh, then all of a sudden you get your hands into the paint and you start finger painting. And if you could even put 
well, you know, one of the uh, uh, brushes in your mouth and you start, you know, painting with your mouth, like everything you want. So that's, that's the kind of match I had with Ray Rosas where it was like, we got freedom to just work. And do whatever you want. Yes. And, and, and it's not necessarily, oh, I'm going to hit you with a chair. No, no, no. You don't, you don't have to do that. In order to tell a good story, you don't have to get hardcore. It, you don't have to do crazy things. What you have to do is capture the audience's imagination. Because the whole thing now is to get them to believe in what you are doing. That you are in a competition versus this other man. Where now it's lost. You know, it's, I watch it and a lot of it, it it's, it's lost. And now it's, hey, do something big. Hey, hey, why don't you jump off the top and twirl in the air and let fireworks come out? And then as you come down, we need the ring to break and have Muppets come out and sing and na, 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 na. you know. So now it's 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 so much more. Now you you almost have to nearly kill the person in order for the people to go, yeah, yeah, you know? It's, it's, um, it's, that art form of telling the story is almost dead right now, and it comes back, and I can't wait for it to come back. I can't wait for it. It, it happened in the 2000s, and it happened uh, again, um, well, uh, hopefully it happens again in the 2010s, and it, it, it's always fluctuating, you know? Okay, so um, you are also a YouTuber. You do the, your um, daddy-daughter retro reviews. Yes, so I do a daddy-daughter retro review with my daughter, Emily Canales. Come here, buddy. You, you, you've been waiting in the wing here while I've been chatting my head away. This is Emily Canales, and she is my real daughter. I don't pay her to say that she is my daughter or anything like that. You know, it's not a contract. It's legit. It's a shoot. <laughs> okay, so, um, hi, Ellen. How are you doing today? I'm good, and yourself? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, I'm glad you are also on my podcast today. See, I'm your dad. So, um, let's get started with both of you. So, um, why did um, you guys start your retro reviews? Is any, like, review? Um, well, I think we started our retro reviews kind of because... I was dabbling with editing on iMovie on my iPad, and I kind of just wanted to film something because I saw like other little girls my age on YouTube kind of just like opening their dolls and that kind of stuff. So I thought it that it'd be fun to kind of like film something and kind of like edit it and do that kind of stuff. So I told my dad about it, <clears throat> and he kind of just started playing with iMovie, and we eventually filmed our first daddy daughter retro review which was but it wasn't at that point it wasn't a daddy daughter retro review it, wasn't it was just it was basically yeah well what it was it was just us playing together you know like we would play um what is it um horsetopia landomania yes okay so you probably look like very confused right now horsetopia landomania is a game that my dad and i made with Legos, kind of just like the Lego friends kind of thing, and it came already built because my dad he got it like already built kind of, and then we kind of started playing with it, and we have a we have a theme song for it, and it's just Horsetopia Landomania. Horsetopia Landomania. Horsetopia Land. It's. We we didn't practice that. We actually haven't even spoken about it. In like months, right? Yeah. But that that's kind of how it started. Like just we we were playing, and I was trying to come up with ways to just interact with her. Cause I don't like, I don't particularly like playing Barbies. It's yeah. it's fun. Like there's some Barbies that they do the super kick, and they could be, they could do real cool hurricane ranas because they have a, a lot of articulation. But other than that. Like, I didn't like to do the shopping and combing their hair. We have to do, we have to go to the salon and get our hair done. 
nah, I don't really, you know, it's not my thing, you know. It might seem like it from some of my wrestling matches, but it's not really my thing. So just trying to find something to do with Emily. Like she said, she was doing stuff with editing, watching YouTubers, unboxing stuff. And um, so we decided to... Just like film us kind of like playing around with st some stuff. And then my dad had some garbage pail kids, like the trading cards. And he's From like, 1986. Oh, they were like 25 cents per pack. And then my dad was just like, let's film us opening it. And then we opened it, and then my dad was all, like, asked my mom, you know, she's like, can I put this on YouTube, you know, let's put it on my channel. And the mom's like, no, you are not putting my daughter there, there's creepy people there, <laughs> they're gonna start stalking her, you know, and I'm just like a little, like, little kid, like, smaller back then. And then my dad kind of, like, brought it up later on, probably like a year later, and at this time, and I had already edited it because he was like... No, I half, halfway edited yeah. I like sort of, uh, um, you know, just playing around with the iMovie on her iPad. I somewhat edited it and I showed it to your mom, right? And then she was like, okay, I'll let you like put it on YouTube. And at this time, the video had been in my iPad for what, like a year? Ma or close a to a year, like close to a year. And then I started really editing and adding pictures, and until it came out all right, I, I, it came out okay. It's just since it was basically us, kind of just playing around. Yeah, it it wasn't like the new ones that we have were were really hyped. Like hey, like before we press record, we were pumping each other up. Yeah. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, Eat let's some do. Candy, it. Like, yeah. Pump me up. <laughs> Yeah, I give her candy yeah, to like hype her up. We had, like, yeah. <laughs> like sometimes with, like what I do and I do some podcasts here. That's why I'm always talking about like fruit punch and stuff. Because every oh, time I drink that, I always get kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had coffee before we came here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you guys have like any like favorite toys? Like favorite toys? Yeah. Like what? favorite toys like. Unboxing of, our own. of oh. your own, yeah. Just of our own? Any type the, of toys. Like, like the videos own. that we already unboxed? Yes. Wh which oh. one is your favorite? I guess my favorite one that we did was, it's not a specific favorite one, I kind of just like the genre of unboxing cards. I really like unboxing cards because we usually just unbox like the vintage cards and like the old ones and I think it's pretty cool to kind of just open it and kind of compare it to some other things you know it's just crazy it's like they're like 30 plus years old and the gum we like trying the gum oh, that's <laughs> we like trying the gum it's very fun that's probably like my favorite part and i know like in the videos i'm probably just like making weird faces but literally i think it's like my favorite part because it tastes it's like it's literally just powder yeah it's gum. not it's not my wife's favorite part though because she always asks and you let her eat it but she didn't eat it, she spit it out. She said, I ate it. That's why I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess. Well, um, my favorite is maybe, um, I have so many. There's so many that, because um, the, the thing is, a lot of the toys that we're unboxing are toys that are in my collection. And my, I got, my house is full of toys. And to a certain point, I was collecting so much. And then I, I figured, what am I doing collecting these toys? One day I'm going to die. And yeah, my daughter's going to end up inheriting all these toys. Like they're basically they're her inheritance. But then what is she going to do with it? Like she's going she's gonna to feel bad selling away these toys because, oh, they're my dad's and he's gone. And this is like keeping apart. No, let's just have some fun with it. Let's record us playing with these toys, unboxing these toys, and I think that'll mean a lot more, you know? Um, and so a lot of these toys are from my youth that I ended up buying once I was like 20, you know? Once I had a job, I, I started recollecting these toys and keeping, keeping them in the box and putting them up on the wall just to remind me of the days when I was a little boy walking into Toys R Us or Target and seeing the toys up on the wall. You know, oh, mama, comprame ese. No. Mm. 
And then, you know, 15 years later, like, ha ha, mire mami, mire lo que me compré. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it, it's, it's, to me, it's a lot of fun, like, um, opening some of the Hasbro figures, the WWF Hasbro figures, opening, like the cards, the cards, opening those, I love them because I collected, I had a big collection of Garbage Pail Kids. Um, another figure that I really enjoyed opening was this G.I. Joe from India. <laughs> uh, that, that one, <laughs> we didn't get a good uh, response from... We got one hate comment. Yeah, because uh, we, I, it, I called it for what it looked like, which was a knockoff figure. But I guess in India, you know, that, that was like the best they had. But to me, it was like, this looked like a knockoff. They used shoddy plastic. The paint job is shoddy. The cardboard is shoddy. Like what everything. Is, what's shoddy? Like, what? like cheapy. Oh, just, then just say cheapy. Yes. Okay, it's cheapy. Okay. The toy is cheapy. There. <laughs> and so, so then, uh, you know, I get a comment. Some guy saying, they're not cheapy or shoddy. It's not a knockoff. Like, we get them here in India for, a, a, uh, like, 10 rupees or something like that, which equal, like, I don't know, like a dollar. I forget, but anyways, it was a hate. It was like, he, he was mad. So I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, what else could you say? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that one I enjoyed it because I was able to pull out some of my uh, G.I. Joe collection and compare it, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, um, just relive some of it and and just notice how cool the toys were when i was a little kid you know just just looking at that stuff and i really enjoy it okay so we're kind of um getting to the end of our podcast here so um where can uh i'm sorry um since creating your show do you feel like you pay more to do you pay more attention to the toys that you buy and get what do you think, Bubby? Well, now Emily, since Emily is a little older, she doesn't, she, her interest isn't in toys anymore. Um, my interest is still in toys. It's never left toys. I think maybe later on, Emily, her interest might come back to like toys. I mean, she'll look at a toy and she'll admire it. Like just today here at the Wrestling Guy store. I mean, she's looking at, at the, Natalia, and she was like, that's pretty. But her outfit is like this. And like, yeah. even, even like the last times I would buy you, the last few dolls that I bought you, like she, she would just pose them. The same way I would do to my uh, wrestling figures or G.I. Joe's, I pose them. So she started doing the same thing. And I remember telling her, why don't you play with your doll? No, because she looks nice there. <laughs> and she'd pose them in her Barbie house. I'm like, yeah, but you're not getting any play out of it. Yeah, but they look nice. And then my wife would tell me, leave her. She's like you. <laughs> don't, don't get mad at her. I'm not getting mad. It's just, esta muñeca me costó 20 dólares y no hace nada con la muñeca. Solo la tiene ahí sentada. And I'm like, ah, leave her. That. She likes doing that. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so, um, yeah, you, I just, you know, and I enjoyed watching her, like, she'd comb the hair, pose them, and she'd stand back and look at them. Like, I could spend an hour doing that, and, like, still now, I'll, like, be in the dollhouse. Yes, I still have a dollhouse. It's pink. It's pretty. And then <laughs> I, like, wipe it down, you know, like, comb the doll's hair, make sure, like, I, I think, I guess, answering the question, um, ever since we started our, vi uh, our videos, I guess I've always just been a picky person with, like, that kind of thing. Like, if you watch the Daddy Daughter Retro Reviews, I'm pretty, like, much the person who is just hating on the toy. I'm always just like, like, oh, well, it's nice, but, you know, so I guess I've always just been, like, a picky person. Like, before <laughs> I buy the doll, like, my dad was like, is this a good one or is this a good one? I will spend, like, ten minutes looking at the doll, like, making sure, and then I'll find, like, a... Defect, like oh, the lipstick goes off. It's on her face. You know? mm. So I've always just been like, close I'll, to details. I'll show her a toy. Or, yeah, I'll show her a toy, and she'll say, uh, and I'll be like, man, this looks so cool. And then she'll kind of spoil it. Yeah, but she looks a little cross-eyed. 
because her eyeballs just a little slightly and then I'll be like no but then my attention keeps going to the eyeballs like yeah huh? she's cross-eyed okay let's look at another one and like no uh, the color kind of came off right here on the side on the eyebrow I'm like no yeah huh so yeah she you know she starts I want to make sure that we're paying for a good you know like getting our money's worth yeah, like we reviewed uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh. I was all oh, like Shinsuke Nakamura. I've been trying to get a Shinsuke Nakamura figure, and they're so hard to get. But I wanted it an elite Shinsuke Nakamura, so I finally got one. We reviewed him, <laughs> and then after having her review it, I just put him back in the box and put him away because now I'm like, ah, he's cheapy. <laughs> and then I feel bad if I see him. He's like. Oh. He put, puts it away, but, like, that's just, like, how I am, like, very picky with those kind of things. Like, I mean, it's not that I don't like the toy. It's just, like, those small defects, like, once you notice them, like, you can't unsee them. Maybe. You know, and, and I do, I, do I, I have noticed that Emily, the older toys, she doesn't point out too many defects. Because I know, like, back then, I'm not, I'm, I'm making, like, back then sound, like, very old, but, like, older, like, Nineteen. Back in my day, <laughs> like nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties, you know, like. Boy, I'm old, huh? Oh! <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Don't like, let, don't let your uncle. He's he, he was born in the seventies. Don't let him hear that. Equally. <laughs> like um, I know. I, I just like know that like time, like the technology now. No, yeah. I'll just end it like that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, well, it's true because anybody. if you look around the store right now, all these figures, there's so many great action figures that they're so detailed. I mean, they scan the the actual wrestler yeah. to replicate them. Where back in the days, they had like the guys who 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 did the figures was a guy in his little basement, you know, carving out out of clay. Uh, the, the likeness of a certain toy, of a certain figure. Uh, Ron Rudat, who was the, the designer in uh, Hasbro, he was the one designing all the G.I. Joes, you know, carving their faces out, making sure they look cool. And then he was, he was the one uh, designing and carving out the faces for the WWF Hasbro figures back in the 90s. And some of them look fantastic. But then some of them, you know, they look kind of kind of off like there's tugboat i know you girls don't know who yeah. tugboat is but boy he's an ugly mess <laughs> well he, he didn't come out as tugboat he came out as a uh, typhoon it was typhoon and he just it's the ugliest face you could ever make like <laughs> no that was like not even his mom liked them you know oh. so, <laughs> but but the actual person didn't look like that but the toy was like Ey. And then there is Dusty Rhodes. Oh, man. Like, ha have you ever seen a person sit on something and then they, like, jump up? Ah! Like that? That's the kind of face they gave him. The American Dream. They gave him that, like, ugly face. Like, like, oh. <laughs> like he sat on something, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, now they can easily scan them and they come out really nice, you know? Um, so I guess with detail, like paint detail, it, when, when the scale starts going up and up and up, you start expecting more of a perfection, I guess, you know? So you start nitpicking and Emily starts nitpicking. She, be, yeah, once you start dating, that, that, that better continue. You <laughs> nitpicking. <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> nah, pues. That's how I still work out, man. That's how I still work out. Otherwise, I'll let myself get all skinny again. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You're fearing that day, too. <laughs> okay, so um, where can people find your um, show? They could find us, they could type in uh, Daddy Daughter Retro Review, or just go to our YouTube channel, 
is Hector Canales. Just type in Hector Canales Wrestling, and you'll find me, uh, find a picture of me. We're trying our best to come up with some sort of design. Just like you have a beautiful design for your yeah. podcast yeah. and for your YouTube channel. It's it, it like, hey, I know what that is. That's doing your art. That, you know, that you know it. So me showing my abs, that's not like the the best thing, you know? So oh, we got to come up with something like a cute caricature of us or even just yeah. like retro toys or something, you know? But yeah, fine. You could follow me on Instagram on uh, as uh, Rio Hector Canales. Find me on Facebook, Hector Canales. Uh, and uh, the Twitter as uh, Rio Hector Can. I'm not really like such a like social media guy, you know? But I try, I try to put like exclusive things on each content, you know, like pictures. Um, Emily and I will do exclusive uh, YouTube uh, live daddy daughter retro reviews. No, Facebook live. Face oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, live. not you. You Facebook live. We'll do yeah. Facebook live Follow daddy daughter. Them so you can like we kind of just like do this every now and then like pop pop up Facebook live. Yeah, we we actually reviewed. Remember when uh, um one of our has one of my Hasbro figures, Million Dollar Man, he's hanging up on the wall. My wife accidentally bumped into him and he fell. And since the glue holding the bubble onto the cardboard is so old, yeah. it popped open. Oh, yeah. And then cause my dad, I think he was, like, wrestling or something. And my mom was, like, walking through the hallway. And my mom was, like, screaming. She said, what do I do? What do I do? Your dad's going to be so mad. And I'm, like, like, you dropped it. Like, don't look at me. But he wasn't He wasn't yeah. all that mad. So we just, we just reviewed it for Facebook Live. And yeah. We had fun with it. So um, we have reached the end of the podcast here. So um, thank you guys for both. Thank you both for being a guest on my podcast today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Hannah, for having us. Thank you, thank you Emily, for <laughs> nice seeing you again. Nice seeing you too. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's what's mommy gonna cook for dinner? I don't know. Oh, okay. okay well, okay. thank you. Thank you too. Okay. Oh, thank you too. <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's just <laughs> it's weird. Okay. Okay, so um thank you to the wrestling guy store for um letting us film here at his store. Uh David store. So yeah. It's... Uh, thank you. Please like, comment and subscribe and have a great day. Bye. Bye.